Hi, I'm going to do a quick uh, little tutorial showing how I set up uh, the pattern Celesterium in Knit Companion. Um, what I've done is created a uh, dummy version of the um, pattern that doesn't show uh, any of the actual text or uh, images, just um, will have the structure of the file. So I've created this dummy and put it in Google Docs for myself. You'll be looking at yours uh, probably from your Ravelry library. Um, so I'm going to click download. And then you'll see in the upper right the little, I have to click again, um, the, the option to open it in Knit Companion. And that's how you actually get the PDF into Knit Companion. Now, I've set a couple of these up already. Um, so this one I'm going to call Celestarium 3. But you can call yours whatever you want. This is the project name, the file name, in Knit Companion. So what I'm going to do is actually go through all the elements in um, the PDF. And I have a printed copy that I like to use to follow along um, if I'm doing a a long or complicated pattern to set up in the companion, but you don't have to have that. I just sort of find it a little easier sometimes. Um, so the first piece I'm going to create is uh, the is a text piece, and it's this little sort of measurements, suggested yarn, things like that. I'm going to call it requirements, and um, it's on the first page here. And I'm going to skip the title and designer. Um, and what I'm going to do is drag the little sliders to crop just the piece of text that I want for this particular, the, the chunk of text that I want for this particular piece in Knit Companion. So the sliders are really easy to use. Um, you can click in the blue part to move back more to the origin, or the white part to move a little bit you know, um, a little bit further along. So I've cropped my requirements section and I'm just going to click save in the lower right corner. That's all I need for this one, very straightforward text piece. The second piece I'm going to create the exact same way and that is the designer's notes on the same page. So I'm going to scroll down, crop, um, just a basic text piece. And there are a couple more of these in the document that I'll do when we get to those in sequence. But this is what I'm going to do first. So I'm going to click Save. That's all I need here. You can see the whole um, image is there. Um, the next piece is actually also a text piece, but it's two columns. And that is the instructions to start the body. So I'm going to create a piece. It's going to be a text piece. I'm going to call it, creatively enough, body. And here you can see that the instructions for starting the body are in two columns. And what I would rather read is one longer column, so with these stacked on top of each other. So the way I'm going to do that is by cropping the first section Notice that I'm excluding the second column. I'm going to save it. And you can see that that's all very nicely there. But in order to get that second column to appear below this so that I'm reading it in order, I'm going to choose this little add image bottom in the bottom right, or a button in the bottom right. I want to add this vertically so that this piece I'm looking at here, this image that I'm looking at here is above um, the other one. So I'm going to choose new image vertically. I'm going to select the page it's on, and then I will crop that section. Really simple. And once I have that cropped, I'm going to click Save, and I get this screen that will let me tell it how I want to arrange them. So this is how they appear now. Work chart C was the um, bottom line in the first piece that I did. So it knows that I wanted to put it the, to add it to the bottom. Um, I don't need it to overlap. Uh, aligning with the edge is fine, but instead of aligning them on the right, I want to align them on the left. 
So now I go down to that work chart C and you can see that it's lined up below. If I were really doing this for myself, I would be a little more obsessive about getting exactly the same, you know, closeness of the pixels and all that, but uh, I'm not going to worry about that right now because um, this is just a demo. Uh, so I'm going to click save and then that piece is done and you can see the finished piece here. Um, if you were doing a pattern that had uh, many more, um, say it had at the same time shaping um, or uh, had multiple sizes and parentheses, you could add highlights, you could add, um, you know, your own little notes wherever you want, but we don't need any of that for here. So I'm just going to go back to set up project and here's where I'm turning my page so I can make sure I get it all right because I've done this a couple times and I've forgotten things. <laughs> um, so the next page has the edging and the finishing, but I'm going to come back to those because I want to fill in the, the parts of this um, instruction. Uh, this body instruction was telling us to go to these different charts. So I want to set up the charts now. Um, so that's another piece. The piece type is chart. And the first chart is, creatively enough, chart A. And uh, it is on page three, so I select page three. Now you can see that um, the charts are uh, oriented uh, at a 90 degree rotation from how I would actually need to read them. So I need to rotate this page so that the charts are um, going to appear the way that I will be working them. Um, and you can do these different steps in different order. This is just one way. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is tell it the number of rows, which in this case is 4. I'm going to tell it the number of stitches, which is 18. And I'm going to tell it that the bottom row is 2, because we already worked a row uh, in the instructions. Um, and we're going to leave increment by at 1. So now I just need to crop the chart. And... Once I've got it cropped, and I've told it the information, what I'm doing here is I'm, I'm giving it the math it needs to be able to divide um, the chart into rows. It doesn't read the grid or anything, it's reading these numbers that I'm giving it uh, and comparing it with the size of the chart, and then it can determine what row I'm on and how thick to make the row indicator, which I'll show you at the end. So I'm gonna so I save that image and I don't need to do anything else here. It's a really short little um, chart. I, it's I, it's very straightforward. I'm not going to add any markers or anything. So I go back to set up project and I'm going to do the same thing for chart B. I'm going to give it a name. I'm going to select the page it's on. And I'm going to rotate my page. Tell it my number of rows, which is uh, eight, I think. Seven, eight, nine, oh, six. Hello, counting. Um, and then it has 36 stitches, and the first row is row seven. This number will um, show up as a as a row number indicator when I'm working, which will help if I, you know, get lost. Which, of course, I never do because I am such an excellent knitter. But um, you know, some people might get lost. So then I just crop my chart. Again, a very simple chart, so I don't need to add anything to it after this. I'm just going to crop it. Done. Okay. And chart C, I'm going to do the same thing. Very quick, simple, one chart. Rotate. Oops, hello. Rotate. My number of rows this time is 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 25, 12. Sorry, I, I never trust whatever. I'm an idiot. Um, <laughs> don't be like me. So uh, here my bottom row is 14. So I've got my three um, bits of numbers that it needs to uh, divide up the chart for me when I'm viewing it. And then I'm cropping and I'm done. And that's all I need for a simple chart. Um, the rest of the charts are not complicated, but they come in multiple pieces. So what we're going to do 
is um, I'm going to show you how to um, stitch those pieces together sort of like we did with the body piece as two chunks that we stitched together but these are going to be stacked uh, stitched together not stacked stitched together uh, horizontally because we read charts from right to left um, or left to right on the other rows but you know what I mean um, as you you don't read them top to bottom um, so I'm gonna tell it I want to make a chart piece this is going to be chart D and I'm going to put both pieces of chart D into one figure, into one piece. So I just select that chart. Uh, this first one is um, 50 minus 27, so it's 24 and 72. And the bottom row is 27. And I want to rotate. I will tell you this, if you crop and then tell it those numbers, uh, or, or and then uh, rotate it. You have to. You might have to recrop, but um, but that's not a big deal. In fact, I will show you how to do a recrop. Let's say I um, did this really sloppily and uh, wanted to come back in and change it. Save this on this screen. You'll see in the bottom right is a recrop button. A recrop is the way you go in and you fix any kind of error that you made in this screen, whether it's actual cropping, like I did here, or it's the number of rows, stitches, bottom row, increments, whatever. So here I can just come back in and I can fix my mistake. And then I've got chart D1. Now I want to add my image and I want to add it to the left of chart D1. So I tell it that I want to add it horizontally. I select the page. My number of rows is going to be the same, and my number of stitches is going to be the same, although they aren't always, so Knit Companion gives the opportunity to, to um, tell it that. So I'm going to rotate, and I'm going to crop chart D2, just like any other chart. And... Hello! There we go. Sorry, even in demos I have to be a little obsessive. Okay, and then I save this, and you can see that chart D1 and chart D2 are next to each other, but not in the order that I need them. So um, you notice that at the top I have the option of telling it to add the new image to the left or the right, and voila! I have chart D1 on one side and chart D2 on the other side, just in exactly like I'm going to knit those rows. So um, I'm going to save that and I want to add a little marker for myself so that I can tell when it, when I get to a point in my knitting where I have a stitch marker um, for the end of the chart because I will because I can't knit without stitch markers apparently. Um, it will correspond to a marker on the chart. So what I'm going to do is click the little markers button in the bottom left corner and I'm going to choose new stitch marker and yellow is fine for me and I'm going to zoom in here now of course um, uh, you'll be seeing the grid of the chart in real life but this is just the cropped edge and I get that as centered as I can you can um, move it because the little button says move and not view um, if I wanted to click around on the chart and not move that then um, I would choose view but I'm going to move it um, just by tapping other places and I'm going to tap until I get it right uh, and I'll show you in a little bit how to add multiple stitch markers and you can adjust the colors um, of any given one so any change that I make here is going to apply to this stitch marker I usually stick with yellow because it's a good contrast with both the chart itself and the row indicator that Knit Companion uses um, okay so that's my piece that's exactly what I want it to look like I don't need to do anything else to that, uh, so I'm going to go back to set up project. And then we have chart E. Chart E has four parts, but it's just fine. It's going to be, we're going to work it just like we did chart D. So I'm going to run through this right quickly. And chart E1, select. Now all the large charts are 48 by 72. And this one, the first stitch or the first row is 52. So I'm going to rotate and crop. I'm going to try to do this quickly because I can hear the dogs and the cats coming back. 
and that will create noise and chaos for my demo video. Okay, so save. Um, I'm gonna uh, here. I could add my marker here if I wanted to, um, and it automatically appends to the leftmost part of the chart. Totally fine. Um, I tend to do them all at once after I've stitched all the charts together, but you can do it however you like. Okay, I'm gonna add an image horizontally. I'm gonna add chart E2. Number of rows is 48. Number of stitches hello, 72. I'm gonna rotate. I'm gonna crop. And crop messily. Yes. Don't like that. Okay, and then I'm going to save. Again, I need to tell it to put chart 2 to the left of chart E1. I'm going to save that, and I'm going to add my marker, new, stitch marker, and it adds another one at the left of chart E2. Someone on LSG told me how to do, told me that that happens now, and I was so excited because in the earlier versions of Knit Companion, if I got to this point and I added a marker, and then I went in and added another image, like I'm doing right now, this chart E3, um, it would wipe away the stitch markers and highlighting and any other annotations that I've done. So I really like that this new version, latest version of Knit Companion, um, will let me go in and uh, add annotations and markers and such without um, removing them if I add an image. Awesome. Um, save, left, so I've got sheet charts one, two, and three, add marker, marker, stitch marker, piece. And finally, I'm going to add chart E4 and 48 and 72 and rotate, rotate, rotate. Okay, in the interest of time, um, I am going to stop with chart E. Chart F works exactly the same way um, as chart F, but I, I really am running out of quiet time in my house. So um, just pretend that we've done chart the, the eight charts of chart F the same way. You can also, of course, add um, text pieces for um, the two tutorials at the end. I tend not to do that because uh, I, or I, I'm not going to do that here um, because I don't really need them for this demo, but um, you would add them just like any other text piece. You also would go back to page two and add the edging and the finishing as text pieces. The things that make text pieces different from chart pieces is not whether they have images, pictures, um, in them, but whether they have grids that need markers and or um, row indicators in them, um, that's all the difference to Knit Companion that, that makes. So everything else is going to be text. Um, I am going to create my keys. Uh, one of them is on um, page three because I want to show you how those work when we get our um, whole project set up. So this is a special kind of piece, it's a special kind of text piece that has its own um, pane in the Knit Companion window when we get our project set up. So I usually have one for um, the legend, for the chart symbols, and then I have another one for um, the abbreviations, which is on the last page. Again, in the interest of time, I won't create that, but it would appear right here um, in the keys section with the chart legend. So that is all we need to do for our setup. I want to show you now quickly how I use it. Um, this main window has whatever uh, shows in detail, whatever appears selected in this top list. Um, so as I'm working, I go, oh, okay, I've got instruction, instruction, instruction. I work chart A, I come over here to chart A. This is my row indicator I was talking about, the orange bar. Um, you, uh, what I usually do um, so we start on row two. What I'll usually do is after I've worked row two, I will increment this little counter, um, which I do just by clicking it, to match the, the row that, I'm, that I've finished because I do have animals in the house. And so the likelihood that either the incrementing arrows or the little counters um, 
are going to is going to get clicked uh, is high, but the odds that both of them will get clicked by accident is low. So here I would click that to row three, and then when I finish row three, I'm going to increment that one. So that way I can always come back and, and figure out where I am without having to um, read a lot of complicated knitting. Um, I can also reset this counter or decrement it, increment it more, whatever I need to do, but I usually keep it hidden out of the way. Um, so that's how these little charts work, and I can always come back to body, and what I usually do actually um, is a little bit kludgy, but when I've worked a certain section so that I can keep track of where I am, I go in here to setup, and I um, click the pencil next to body, which tells it that I want to edit it, and I want to add some highlights. I choose new highlight, and I just drag, just drag the little um, box and the little handles to say, okay, that's what I've finished. So now I go back to my piece, and um, I'm just clicking back here. So I can see here easily in my instructions that I've worked chart A. So now I go and I work chart B, same little thing. When I finish chart B, whoop, when I finish chart B, so that's the end of chart B, um, then I would come back here and I would add that, I would extend that same highlight down to cover uh, under work chart B. The um, wider charts, that we saw, they are going to look tiny because remember this is a grid and this orange bar represents the height of one um, row. I can pin use the pinch method to just zoom in right on whatever section I'm working and then I just scroll across uh, very easily. So that is how I have set up Celestarium in Knit Companion and uh, I hope that this was helpful to you and that you enjoy knitting the pattern.